Dirt Road is also 17 miles long. But this one isn't a loop road, and that's a good thing, since it brings us closer to our next destination up Highway 261. Most of the buttes are located on the east, or Highway 163 side, and this time, that's where I entered, the Valley of the Gods. According to the map on the BluffUtah.org map, the buttes all have names, but I couldn't tell one from another. And by the way, if you're looking for a fancier place to stay, with more trees and river access, check out the many hotels and resorts in the historic town of Bluff. It's less than 30 minutes away. I've never stayed there, but I have driven through it. It's nice, quite quaint. I've never accepted a free room for inclusion in one of my videos, but I'm willing to start Hoteliers of Bluff. Hint, hint, hint. Once again, the dirt and gravel road is in good shape. The road follows a frequently dry wash. It's a spectacular landscape. When Apollo astronaut Buzz Aldrin stepped on the moon, he described what he saw as magnificent desolation. That's a pretty good description of this place too. If you're watching this and wondering, what is there to do here? Well, this is it. From time to time, just stop to take it all in. For some of us, it doesn't get a whole lot better. This area is not controlled by the Navajo, so you don't need a guide to explore the backcountry. I didn't know it at the time, but it's managed by the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. That means that there are very few rules here. I saw a few people who even set up camp. And apparently, that's okay. For a short period of time, this was all part of the controversial Bears Ears National Monument, which was more highly regulated. And all it takes is a presidential decree for it to be included in the monument again. The road does cross a wash or two. After a rain, I doubt this crossing would be passable. At least not in my Subaru Forester. These spires, they're taller than they look. This one is well over 400 feet above the deck. And in total, it reaches over 5,000 feet. We're about six miles in, and for the next mile or so, I thought I'd pass along a little advice. I've been out here several times, and I've learned a thing or two about exploring out here and the role that phone maps play. First, you don't always have a signal out here, so your phone may not work. And there's a good chance you won't even know that it's not working, causing you to miss a turn and possibly even get lost. This actually happened to a friend of mine. When I was out here, my phone map mostly did have a signal and the GPS helped me find this road. But throughout the trip at times, I was too dependent on it, causing me to drive right by some very nice places. I'm rather embarrassed to say that while shooting this footage, I had no idea I was so close to the Moki Dugway and the great view on top called Muley Point. So I missed a great opportunity to be there in nice weather. The only time I've ever been there, I was returning from Natural Bridges, which is another hour to the north, and the weather was not very good. When you've come all this way, I highly recommend that you see at least one Native American ruin site. And years ago, I heard about a place called House on Fire. It's a small site, but a great photo op. I thought it was in a very remote spot. It turns out it's only 30 minutes from the top of the dugway. If I had just looked at a detailed map or Googled it specifically, instead of just relying on my GPS to get me from point A to point B, I could have taken the 2.2 mile round trip hike to one of the best photo ops in the area. And just 11 miles from House on Fire, there's another small ruin site called Butler Wash Ruin. This one is on my Rand McNally paper atlas, but there was no sign to it when I drove by, so I still missed it. Turns out I should have plugged this one into my GPS maps. Now I've been to big sites like Chaco Canyon, Canyon de Chez, Mesa Verde, and the smaller Three Rivers Petroglyph site. And I've got to say the smaller sites are much more intimate. And somehow it's easier to imagine what it was like to live there back in the day. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when planning a trip, use multiple sources. When you're heading out here, be flexible and open to exploring. Don't be married to a GPS destination. Okay, let me get back to talking about this road. At this point, we're about seven miles in and the road is at its most dramatic. Up ahead is a butte I actually can ID, Castle Butte. It taps out at over 5,300 feet. The road is a bit rougher here, but still not bad. Once the road goes around Castle Butte, it's in open scrub country with even fewer people. It can take as little as 45 minutes to drive across the Valley of the Gods Road. It's well worth it. The west end of the road terminates at Highway 261. Take it to the left to head back to the Goosenecks or Monument Valley. Or take it to the right to our next destination, atop the Moki Dugway. 
Before I show you the dugway, I want to talk about Muley Point. There's an east and west viewpoint. Go to both. They say that if this area ever becomes a part of a bigger park, well, you just know they're going to put a big parking lot here and there won't be any camping allowed, at least not right here. And of course, the crowds will come. But for now, it's a wonderfully lonely place. It's one of the few places where you can truly experience the vastness of nature. It's just not the same when crowds are fighting for parking places just a few feet away. To get here, you'll take the dirt road at the top of the